crown of all this. You're alive. You did it. We're here. Where's my volume? Greetings, Internet. Find yourself in the basement of Indy Farm Wife. That's right. With my Indy Farm Wife. It's hiding from the camera it's because it's almost bedtime. Just hanging out. I see Charger Mopar, Rick, the first live. Been around the channel for a minute. I'm not, having not done this, can I see who's in the room here? Participants. I'm not sure we're live until the countdown. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Delete that one. We are officially live now. So now I can or, say, when did I say greetings, Internet? You said greetings, Internet. You find yourselves in the basement of the Indy Farm Life. They added the the for a flare. The Indy Farm Life, yeah. like the Facebook. <laughs> oh, look at this. We got longstanding viewer, Rick, Charger Mopar, and Spicer Designs. Wow. What an honor. Where's the beach background? You know, I should have put something. I'm in, I'm in the basement at the basement table. It's probably a little echoey in here. So it's kind of just like bland walls and you got me. It we keeps me front and center. some of Otto's Legos if you want. We could decorate with Legos. Are you going to stick around? Or are you going to? I'm just curious about what's happening here. My wife is off camera right here and she wants to be part of it and... It's just really close. But she to also bedtime. doesn't in terms of bedtime. The audio sounds good. All right. Thanks, Kyle. This is really odd to just kind of sit here and talk to yourself. You're talking to me. I am still a person. I, I understand that. But they don't know that. They do. We're telling them. Could be a phone call. So what's going on? Uh, Rick's down in Florida. Kyle's down in southern Indiana. We're in central Indiana. Kyle, how's your pond? Is it full? Ours is not. I can't see if anybody else is dealing with a groundhog problem. Sore subject. I have a groundhog problem in my barn still, guys. I got one not too long ago. Full and pretty mucky, says Kyle. Hey, full though, I would be down with full. Ours is not full. We still probably need, I don't know what you say. 11, 12 inches of rain or inches on top of the pond. I'll get my rain dance started. We got about three inches of rain earlier in the week, though. That helped quite a bit. Kyle, have you done, you've not done one of these before, have you? I'm getting my bearings. It says I've got eight or so people here, but I can't see them all. Tornado watch, Pennsylvania, Doug. Oh, What's going on out there? Almost got in frame. Best machine for barn cleaning is a skid steer. I would probably agree, but my barn, well, A, my barn is not very big. It's only 25 by 30. It's an old Kwanzaa hut. And I have an absolute mountain of milled up lumber that I need to use for something before I can do anything with it. Um, but once I get that out of there, yeah, I'd agree. I'd like to put concrete in it this year. That's on my list of like 45 projects that are probably won't get done this year. Yeah, I know, Kyle. You got poor internet. Doug, you have to come visit. I'll, I'll build it. I guess if I build it, you'll, you'll come. Is that how this works? I have plenty of things you could build for me. I know. You should use that lumber to build a floating dock and then bring it over here. It's not it's not pressure treated there, hometown. How's your pond? You do need a dock though. Yeah, Rick, you're you're down in Florida, so I don't know if you follow hometown anchors. Adam is over in Pennsylvania, as is his neighbor, Doug, One Eye Customs. 
And then Spicer Designs, Kyle, he's just south. You don't want to talk about it, about your pond. Ugh, I don't, I mean, I kind of do want to talk about it now. I mean, he's you're going to make some more pond related content to, to milk that thing. Sorry. What? <laughs> That's a running joke. I heard it. Oh, so. so <laughs> uh, we have ducks and geese currently on our pond. Not any of those, though. This is who I thought it would be. You're a good guesser. Well, good night, Internet. It's been real. Taking that? Baby monitor with you? Take that, please. Oh, no, you can have it. You're surprising. I ran out of a... Uh, that I'll put a heart on that one. How do you even do that there? Uh, I ran out of the twisted tees. Do I have two chairs there? I've got four chairs here. She didn't want to be on camera. She just went upstairs to uh, hit the hay. She's a. That's why I'm doing this 8:45. Kids are in bed. She's going to bed, and you know now the five of us can chat. Says eight, but. No, it just happened to work out that the evenings work better. What I'm hearing is I picked Rachel's bedtime so that she wouldn't stand here and make stupid comments. I didn't say it. <laughs> All right, well, it's been real. Just join from upstairs on your phone and just comment. That would be kind of fun. How do I even do that? You'll figure it out. Will I? I would hope so. I've made it this far in life. Just barely. Editing helps, Doug. Slipper Red Bull. I don't have any Red Bull. But we do have like one or two twisted tees of hometowns still in the in the the fridge over there. So what's new with everyone? You haven't seen a whole lot from me lately. Between my day job and the kids and still finishing this basement out here. There's not been a whole lot of time for much else. Hoping to, to change things here very shortly. The backhoe transmission needs fixed. Probably won't make that happen this year. We got a new dog today. The girls are happy. Are you going to do with the dog what you did with that? Uh, was it a, was it a razor or the little side-by-side -side? in and out in three months? Kyle, I need you to drive up here and do a live with me because sitting here trying to talk by yourself is, man, it's hard. It's hard. You think it's hard in a video, but you can edit that stuff out. Hey, who wants to buy a very large bush hog? Truthfully, I'm trying to unload a seven foot woods bush hog that I don't need anymore. Kyle is up there every day. I'm not sure what that means. Adam, are you putting air in your pond? You're not stocking your pond, are you? My aerator burned up a few weeks back. No, we haven't. That's pretty cool, Rick. Took an old brush hog and flipped it to a hydraulic for the front of the... That takes some serious know-how. Good for you. You kind of sound like Doug. And no, Kyle and I never collaborated. We keep talking about it. I'm still coming out of my, my winter shell. My day job just got me slammed to the max for a minute. But once we get into, he's traveling northern Indiana quite a bit. Eh, maybe family. I don't know. Carl and I will connect later. Put it on the calendar. I know. 
did you get your front gate all finished up? Funny you should say that, Kyle. Um, my neighbor texted me last night and said the lights he ordered showed up. I have all the electrical uh, components to wire it up. Um, once we get it wired up, we just got to slap the openers on there and call the utility company to come drop the meter in. So soon enough. We actually joked. We bought the posts uh, five years ago today or yesterday. So no, it's not done. Thanks for asking. Also had a wood-powered truck from 1995 to 2008. That's cool. So wood-powered mean, I assume, like steam-powered? Like the wood has a boiler in it and then steam powers the Any ideas on getting water to the pond? Your pond or my pond or Adam's pond? I assume you mean my pond. Um, my latest idea, as we had about three inches of rain this past week, and our little ditch by our house just kept running nonstop was to simply drop a sump pit. I have an old sump pit from when we built the house we didn't use. And I want to maybe drop it in there and get a 6,000 gallon per hour sump pump and stick it in there and see if I can't pump that out to the pond. That'd be roughly every four hours it'd add an inch whenever it's big time running. So that's my idea. Will I get to it or not this year? We'll see. Uh, I would like it full though, because like I said, it came up about, oh gosh, six inches, seven inches over the last week, just by the rains that we had. So to see it full be would be nice. Um, still got to do fish habitat. That's not in there yet. That's on the list this spring. What about one of those windmill pumps? Well, I would need a a well for that. So they have windmill aerators, which I don't really need. And um, a windmill pump, I would just need to have a well to pump it from. My current well is only a four inch casing for the house. It probably wouldn't be big enough for pumping water into the pond. But I want to do something because right now it looks like a little hole and the last two and a half feet on the pond make it just look ridiculously large. It's so much nicer than the messy hole. Yeah, but fish habitats on the list. Got to gotta put water into the pond. Um, my aerator burned up two weeks ago. Actually, uh, I know Kyle, you used the Vivor aerator pump and Adam, I don't know if you're ever going to put one in your pond, but I had bought mine from half off ponds, uh, half off ponds.com. And they actually give you a two year manufacturer warranty on the aerator and mine burned up with 20 months in on the two year, maybe it was even 22 months. And then they sent me a new one free of charge. No problem. No questions asked. Pretty awesome service i'll make a video about that at some point because it was uh ironic interesting that they actually honored it i didn't think most people would yeah that's what mine is rick it's a rocking piston air compressor i think it's it's specifically made for um ponds <laughs> am i still making videos no not really kyle uh not not too much. How do I how do I hide that user from the channel? Well, Doug, your neighbor has a pond. You should go over there. It's probably full and has no leaks. And pop on over. Now, now it looks like Kyle got hacked by Doug with that comment. Here comes the humdinger from hometown. I should have just, I mean, we should have just at this point maybe had a chat with the four of us and invited Rick to it, guys, because this is about what I expected it to be, so. But yeah, if anyone wants to buy a bush hog, I'm trying to unload one. I have a uh, no need for a bush hog anymore. None of the property is not really maintained anymore. Um, don't need a bush hog, but I would like to pick up a seven and a half foot finish mower and put it behind my tractor. As much as I love my grasshopper, the stuff out by the pond, man, it, it grows far too fast this time of year, April, May, and it rockets up to, you know, 
18 inches in a week and you can't keep up. What I deliver to PA? Funny you should ask. I was just looking at a, a Woods finish mower south of you guys, um, but I'd be picking something up. I don't know if you'd want it, Doug. I mean, you, have, you probably do have a, a bush hog or a tractor big enough to run it, but it's pretty hefty. I started my pond dig last week, half acre. Tim, um, were you the one who messaged me earlier today saying you were down around Louisville? I had someone that did. I can't remember who the name exactly it was. Finish mower would be nice. You ever considered getting a cab tractor? Uh, you know, it's funny. I A cab tractor would be nice, but I am on and off my tractor so much, and I don't mow like endless acres of grass or do, you know, PTO work across multiple acres. I don't know that I'd like a cab. Sure, maybe in the winter for blowing snow, but I, I've been fine with that one. Plus, I like to communicate with whoever I'm working around with. Okay, sorry, Tim. Not you from southeast Georgia. Yeah, half acre. Nice. Is it fully ex excavated? Do you have a, a dam you're building into it, or is it just like ours? Because ours was a flat cornfield, and we dug a giant hole um, and really had no dam to mess with. And are you doing all the work yourself, or do you have someone helping you? Because as much as I like to take credit for our pond, and, you know, I did help quite a bit. Um, our neighbor, the farmer, was the – he was certainly the linchpin of the operation with his equipment. Another Hoosier here. Found your channel from the pond. Dive video. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, Jason. Aerator is a must, um, If you, especially if you have fish, but you'll keep the algae off of it for sure. I was just commenting to guys earlier. Aerator burned up last week, but uh, it was under warranty still, so I was able to – another one. And the pond eye stuff is funny. You wouldn't believe how many environmentalists have blown me up about the pond eye. I get it. It's it's not man it's man made and it's not natural per se, but it still serves a purpose. Made into double digits, double digits here. Do you feed your fish? Um, I haven't yet. Uh, right now we've got a problem with the uh, hybrid bluegill. Man, they're gnarly. You guys know Kyle and Adam. Um, but I would like to fish them out of there if we can at some point. Thankfully, hybrid bluegill are 90% male, so they don't reproduce too much. But, uh, man, they're they're a nuisance. And I haven't started feeding them yet because I kind of want to get them out of there. I don't want them to be growing. The old areas, remember, were belt-driven, two-horsepower beasts that lasted decades. Belt-driven. That's like when you go out to the, the county fair, the state fair, and you see those steam engines. We always like watch the belt drive tractors. I mean, my buddy, Chris. Yeah, the Vivor pump. Kyle, you've had that for a minute. Probably creeping up on the years, my guess. Jason, where in the state are you located? You won't regret the aerator either, circling back to that. Somebody earlier mentioned a green screen. Green screen. Is that even possible on here? Because that'd be kind of cool. I would put the beach behind me from our pond. But I don't know if that's... Someone more experienced and with a better YouTube acumen. Jason, you and I might need to connect, man. South of Seymour... I grew up 15 minutes from Seymour. We're in we're in small company here. It was in a small town of North Vernon. So I know the area quite well. You have something down there that I don't have up here, and Kyle does have it. Um, Paris Crossing, Indiana. We we probably cross paths at some point, Jason. Uh, yeah, you guys got the topography. It's all flat up here. I do not like that. Oh, yeah. Rick, many of my shirts don't have the sleeves anymore. They're all from college or high school years and years ago, and uh, they kind of just 
become a life form of their own. What projects do I have going on this summer? Um, what kind of uh, projects that are on the list and that are on the short list are kind of two different things. I made a video a week or two ago about uh, about those projects. But one thing I really want to get done is um, I want to get electric to my barn and I'd like to get concrete floor in my barn. The problem is I've got an insane amount of milled up lumber from, from the property about six years ago before we built our house. And uh, I need to get that out of there. So that would be predicated on, we got to build a lean to to use that lumber up, but electric and concrete in the barn, the backhoe transmission needs rebuilt. That won't make the price cut this year. My kids want a, you know, a, well, my kids want a play set and I kind of want to build them, a, you know, a very opulent playhouse, whatnot. Um, but yeah, honestly, it's a lot of just keeping up with, the maintenance around here. You think Adam fell asleep? I'm not surprised by that. Damn, not damage. I must have I hired someone local. Damned up one end. Okay. That's good. Uh, we didn't really have any springs feeding ours. We had some groundwater coming in, um, but didn't really have any. My husband destroyed our pond. It's all mud. How do you do that? Jet ski for the pond? Yes. Bring one. Garrett? Yes. Yeah, I was just saying the same thing, Kyle. Jason is down from my neck of the woods and very close to you. Kyle destroyed your pond, cutting down the pine palm tree. Garrett, more about this jet ski. You want to trade a, uh, a giant bush hog for a jet ski? I need to unload a, a bush hog and, you know, or ski do or a wave runner. What's it going to be? These side conversations between hometown and one eye customs and Spicer, there's inside jokes rolling around in there that I don't even, I'm not even privy to. <laughs> uh, I only have a 25 horsepower tractor. Yeah, the the frame for the rotary cutter I have it's a Woods. I think it's R107-2. It uh it it barely fits on my 4 series. When I when I went to pick it up, uh, it was northern part of the state at an auction. And I bought it, and I went to pick it up, and they loaded it on my trailer, and I about told them to just keep it. But I brought it back here, and there's some videos from three or four years ago when I was first clearing the property, and it was fine. Um, it worked just fine, but, man, it it was all the tractor could, could handle that size. Used lawnmower for mulching, got rid of the lawn years ago. So what, I don't find out what that means. Yeah, Doug, it, it actually probably be about perfect on a 68 horsepower. So I ran it on my 52 horse and uh, it would knock. I mean, it it's only a single spindle. So two giant blades with a stump jumper. Um, but man, it would destroy three, four inch saplings. No problem. So yeah, 68 horsepower, you'd be able to run it. You want it? Come get it. I want to circle back. Was it Tim said he just, yeah, started his pond. I want to see pictures and I'm always curious now because it's been five years. It's been five years since we dug our pond. Yeah, five years this summer that we've dug our pond. So it's been a minute. <laughs> uh, love it. I've, I've been searching the internet for a Chinese uh, based excavator and I can't find any videos out there. So Carissa Spicer, if you want to point me in the direction of what you're talking about, that'd be, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. So I must be, 
maybe Adam could tell me better. As people pop in here, I don't see them all on the participants list, but I see a higher number over on my, my counter. So I don't know how this works if people are in here that aren't registered and whatnot. Uh, anyone in Indiana who needs – you're doing the right thing right on – the live thing right on. There's a little heart covering the first comment down there. I can't miss them. Thanks, John. You've been around the channel for a minute. Definitely recognize your handle. Um, hey, for you Indiana folks, real quick, while I got a few of you in here, if you need pallet forks, Kyle, I don't know if you have pallet forks. Um, I just ran across for the first time a company called – Express Steel. And I guess five years ago, they were kind of a four or five man shop. Now they have like 30 employees or whatnot. But I'll tell you what, they sell a two ton rated set of pallet forks for $650, I think it was, or $625. I got them this week, brand new. Pretty nice. So if you're uh, around the Indy area, if you go there, they actually give you a discount for picking them up yourself. So pretty good deal. So if you're in the market for pallet forks, Run that way. May may try to partner with those guys in the coming future. Temporarily permanent. I like the name. Hello, how you doing? Chinese excavator beats a pick and a shovel. You got that right. Any piece of equipment really that you can put to good use. But how does it feel? I mean, you can lean on a shovel. Can you lean on a Chinese excavator the same way? Part of the world are you from temporary permanent you know the hoosier in fact there's more hoosiers in here than there are otherwise for you other fellow youtubers out there i did finally pick myself up a drone so hopefully another pencil so indiana and pennsylvania and florida it's like all we've gotten here i'm gonna do the whole uh adding a drone to the videography this year hopefully so i got that going m track repair and off-roading <laughs> more jokes from one eye customs there m track repair and off-roading i gotta ask where you're from now man you're popping in here it's gonna i'm guessing florida indiana or pennsylvania See, another Hoosier. I, I I wish there was a way to like look at my subscriber base and figure out where everyone's actually from. Because I the more I have this channel and kind of just poke around, there's so many Hoosiers that are either YouTubers themselves or just joining the channel from Indiana. It's kind of wild. M track North, South, Central. Yeah, Jason, the boilers didn't look too tough the other day. I mean, Yukon's building a dynasty. Just think what you could do if you made videos. You know what, Doug? You're right. You are right. I need someone, perhaps a neighbor, who could follow me around with a camera and, you know, be a part of my videos with me, edit them for me a little bit, maybe has some nice equipment, skid steer, willing to help out all the time. I need that. But yeah, I agree. I'd love to make more content. Believe me, um, when time permits, I will definitely be doing so. I'm set for forks. Do you know any secret places in central Indiana to source free pallets? Um, no. I mean, I've ordered enough stuff that when I need pallets, I have them just laying around because stuff comes on a pallet. Actually, I've got something coming tomorrow on a pallet. And I'll let you guys guess, see what it is. I'm pretty excited about this. Um, but no, I don't know of a place. I would always jump on like Facebook Marketplace or does Craigslist still exist? That was always a, a staple. How many pallets do you need, Roger? Right next to Fort Wayne. And there is only one neighbor, Doug. I know. 
I have a neighbor who has all the toys, but he's pretty busy this time of year. Doing a little farming. I'd bring Bob over if I lived closer. Yeah, Rick, you've been around for a minute. I think you've been like commenting on videos probably since the day we started posting stuff about the pond. <laughs> you can't, even though Kyle and I have not collaborated, you can't take him from Indiana. He's He's got to stay. Yeah, people on Facebook Marketplace, John, they just, they post and they want to get them, get them out of there. Okay, Roger, so t 10 would be awesome. Yeah, if, uh, that's what I would do is Watchdog Marketplace or um, Craigslist, like I said. I will say uh, it might be worth checking around just some small businesses. I know that um, my dad uh, back home gets them from a local lumber yard because they have them coming in nonstop. So <laughs> I don't like Adam's even here anymore. His hometown acre is still here. Or is he out with his? He's probably laser engraving a, a board somewhere. Yeah, he's gone. He's no longer with us. I mean, he's he's still alive and present somewhere, I, I would assume, but not not on the stream. Uh, back to what I said. Do you guys have any guesses? Um, actually, Hometown Acres should be the guy I'd be doing in this guess. But I got something I ordered from, I think they're in Maryland, that should be here tomorrow. What is a mud mower? You don't sell Keystone, Pennsylvania, by the 30 packs. So we moved south. <laughs> uh, Doug, I don't think he's... He left the arena. He is not in the arena. All right, there's been no guesses, so I'm just going to rip the bandit off and tell you guys what I bought. And we'll be here tomorrow for Maryland ordered myself a super split HD. That'll probably bring Adam back to the channel. But yeah, I've been wanting to find ways to um, split quickly. That's the thing. Time is super important and limited. So I bought a super split HD. I don't know if you guys have seen this before or not. Um, they're a kinetic log splitter. So they've got two, I thought you hated firewood. Well, I don't hate it. I just like to rib hometown acres. Um, Super Split HD, I bought, they have three models. They got the, the base J model, the HD model, and then they have one that's kind of like more commercial. But it's a kinetic log splitter. And it's got two 90 pound flywheels, a 60 or a six horse, 60 horse, a six horse, um, Honda engine on it, gets kinetic energy going, shoots the Ram out, two second cycle time. I'm excited. I've seen videos of guys who have split. I, I want to say people were splitting an entire cord in an hour with two people. So not too bad with just a you know normal log splitter, not a processor. Yeah, Rick, I can't imagine in Florida you would be needing much of that. I live about a half mile from a place that makes pallets. They get 45. Well, brand new pallets, yeah. Um, they sell them 45 to the open market or that's no way at wholesale. Yeah. I'd say Roger, your best bet is to find some uh, business that's trying to unload them. Cause I feel like some people just have them coming out of their ear. You just got to find them. But, and then pick them up that way. Man, this is a, this is an episode of the usual suspects here. I'm not mad about it. Yeah, the, the one thing about a skid steer log splitter is that you have to have a skid steer. I don't have a skid steer. <laughs> it would be cool. I always thought about having one for like the backhoe or uh, the tractor, but you know, like what's it's one thing to to need it and to drive your tractor out in the woods and uh, you know split wood out in the middle of the woods because it's a necessity. But 
for what these machines cost, I'm not going to sit and uh, put hours on my tractor. You know, when I could put hours on a little Honda motor, I want to put countless low idle hours, especially my tractor being tier four. Andy Farm Life Minus. Oh, Doug, do you think that they're dangerous? I don't think they're going to be that dangerous. No, I don't have a skid steer yet. Yet. That is a key. I, I get your point. Keyword. I know you're a fan of deer, but what's your second choice? You know what? I don't know, quite honestly. Um, I haven't spent enough time on other machines to machine to know, Kyle. Um, I have to research it. I mean, I would if I was going to have to go buy one in tomorrow, I'd probably go give Kubota a shake. But I, I would shop around for sure. But I feel like Kubota is probably the another mass market producer that's kind of hitting that. Uh, any red guys here? Well, by red, do you mean? Well, Doug, I'm not. I'm I'm young and spry. I'm two second cycle. Let's do it. Uh, M track. When you say red. Are you talking like Mahindra or truly case? Because I think a lot of people that are kind of in this realm, um, you know, dealing with tractors the size that I have, that Adam at Hometown Acres has, Kyle's, et cetera, they're all smaller. You know, they're not row crop. And I don't think that case makes any subcompact and compact tractors, do they? Yeah, case IH, get a quad track going. I mean, when you get to row crop and you start to get into the nine series size tractors, eight and seven series, of course, case and deer are the two standouts there. Uh, but I don't know that I've seen case in a smaller size. My neighbor, he farms about 800 or a thousand acres, which in the grand scheme is not a lot, but from where I'm at, from where I'm at, it's quite a, quite a bit. He exclusively runs deer. He actually pulled up this fall was uh, chisel plowing with a, a quad track that he had just picked up. And he has another brand new nine series. You know, farmers don't make any money. Grab him with a skid steer splitter and split it right into the wagon. Yeah, I I think that, you know, we've only got about nine acres here. At least my wife and I own nine. And then my uh, rest of my neighbors kind of bring us to 40 when we all put our, our houses together and whatnot. But um, I don't have endless acre of, of wood endless acres of woods to, to ride out on and, and split farmers go from billionaires to millionaires. I guess I could see that. What generation you're looking at TYM, which I have uses the same touch up paint as the old. Yeah. In our farm wall. Interesting. That's kind of a cool, um, I've got the old inner, uh, international harvester barge wagon still sitting out there. That thing's been pretty awesome. I know where John's going with this. If you had a a splitter attachment on an excavator and you just had a stack a stack of logs bucked up, there's no quicker way to split a lot of wood in an afternoon, especially on a hot day, than sitting in the cab of a tractor or excavator and knocking that stuff out. You're pretty quick. I'm surprised Adam hasn't bought any of that. Kyle, yeah, I'd love to, man. Let's uh, exclusively let's have a uh, hybrid bluegill fish fry. I know you'd appreciate that. We need to get them out of there. They only stocked, I think, two hundred, and they have a five to eight year lifespan. Hybrid bluegill do, so they won't be around for too awful long. Uh, but I'd love to get them out of there. So yes, let's do that. Yeah, I'd be curious. I know you. I saw you post a, a picture or two of some pretty sizable bass that you caught in your pond. So you've got, you know, some aged fish in there. Our fish have only been in the pond, I think now for what, two years come this May or so. So it's not been too long. They're growing. This is taking some time. We can have a groundhog. Um, do you really? Or are you just yanking my chain? We could cook some groundhog up. I'm trying to 
eradicate them from my barn. We're infested. It's bad. It's very bad. Other plans for the summer. Um, like to enjoy it a little bit. Good for you for feeding them. Uh, I've talked, thought about getting an old deer feeder or a fish feeder to, to feed them. I like to feed the catfish. Just have to get enough lard for a fry. Yeah, I, the problem I think that if we were to try to have a fish fry is there's not probably that many big ones. So would you get much? Who knows? I hate it. They're terrible, M-Track. I mean, they're nonstop. And I'm done. I'm done playing games. I got some condom bears. So, so far this week, one down. Those things don't mess around. But, yeah, they're... They are a nuisance. And they mock me. I'll be getting ready for work in the morning. I look out the window, and he's just kind of sitting up on a big rock next to the backhoe, just like sunbathing. And he'll kind of turn and look at me, and I'm brushing my teeth. And then it like, gives me the middle finger and runs back into the barn. It's the worst. Excavator mowers for waterside mowing. Yeah, I think uh, he's not even here anymore. I don't know why I mentioned his name, but I think didn't Adam get maybe a mower attachment for his excavator? Maybe Doug has one. Yeah, that'd be a nice. That's an expensive setup, though. Look at this. We got connecting folks here, getting some some work done. Kyle's, at, Kyle's driving this conversation with all these pointed questions. I like it. Do I have any big plans for the berm? Uh, not really. I mean, I'm not planning on moving, moving the berm anytime soon. But what I probably should do, I don't think folks have really understood how big Tanner works well for the groundhogs. Uh, plans for the berm, though. I mean, I need to grade it out and fix it. I'm, I've always thought about making a video called extreme box blading because when you have to go clean that thing up, we take the golf carts up there quite a bit. And so just last week um, I actually hit it real quick because it had rutted out real bad. So perhaps a video of that, but other than maintaining it and keeping it drivable, nothing too crazy, but I should take the drone once I have it going and kind of document just the sheer size of it. Cause I don't think that the videos I've taken really do it justice other than when we, you know, for <laughs> I, yeah, I would like to see that in practice. How do you, what do you do to set buckets of tannerite around and then wait for the groundhog to walk by it? I mean, if so, that's pretty cool. If you got time though. Question, you still got that grasshopper mower? I sure do. And uh, just mowed for the first time for the year this past Sunday. Grass was about 18 inches tall, powered right through it. My, my mower is a 2001 or 2002 but I love it. It's, it's a beast. Um, I replaced all the spindles and the belts and the springs this past. He keeps the grasshopper in the living room. Shh, don't tell my secrets. Uh, but yeah, it's a solid mower and the front deck for, for owning a pond to be able to take that front deck and just kind of put it up over the edge as you're going around is so nice. Roadinator pro. I've made the only, that sounds dangerous, Rick. I don't know what that is, but propane and oxygen gets gophers and groundhogs. Yeah. You got to flush them out of the holes. I've looked at stuff like that where you can kind of uh, put CO2 into the, you got to make sure your other ends trapped out though. I parked my craftsman in my parents' living room and I, he's not joking. I've just met M track for the first time here. First time I've seen him in my comments and I, I don't think he's joking. I don't. <laughs> oh yeah john um the split fire i was looking at those briefly before i bought the super split they look like they have pretty nice stuff but you know kind of got on my price range pretty quick but yeah i'm anxious to get the super split i here's the problem is i'm gonna end up splitting so much firewood it's just going to end up sitting around like my log pile did, but I'm tired of the log pile. It's been right up on top of my barn. 
uh, Quonset hut. And it's just in the way I need to get it out of there. Thinking about a beach this year. How is your beach holding up? Is it worth it? Jason? Yes. Yes. And yes, it's awesome. Um, it's been, it's been really good. Uh, I have not raked it out this year. So when we did ours, I don't know if you've been around for too long and, uh, Kind of funny you burn up your wood to split. No, I didn't, Doug. I've got – sorry, I got sidetracked. We've got insane long piles still to go through. Not like Adams, but uh, – but, Jason, back to the, the beach. Um, it's awesome. It's got some growth in it over from, you know, springtime coming up. I just mechanically take care of that. I don't spray or anything. I just take the landscape rake on the 4052R and rake out all the greenery sprouts. And if I do that once every two weeks – in the summer, it'd be fine. Um, if you watched my video, or maybe you didn't when I first put it in, um, I used good old fashioned Harbor Freight tarps, some enormous ones. Uh, I want to say they're like 12 mil, they're pretty heavy. Put those down first and then put sand right on top of those. So anything I have growing is actually just in the sand. I've not had any penetrations through uh, the tarps themselves. And so my tarps actually are on the beach. And then they're actually in the water as well. And I have one air bubble that got somehow got created um, in the water. And to this day, it is still an air bubble. It has, the Harbor Freight tarp has not let any air through the tarp, which I think is ridiculously impressive for you know, Harbor Freight stuff. But uh, yeah, the beach, do it. You'll love it. Um, Mason sand or, you know, just wreck sand are fine. I did notice that I think the mason sand has like a polymer in it. So it feels, you know, really nice on your feet and hands and stuff. But when you first throw it um, down and you get some of it next to the water or touching the water, it did seem to foam up a little bit. I didn't see any fish kill off or anything like that, but it took a couple of days before that kind of settled back down. Oh, Kyle, you're going to build a vertical splitter. I, I was in the market like a week, you know, a month and a half ago. You didn't offer to build me one. Beach, dude, we are in Southeast Indy. How far to your place? I'll bring steaks and beer. Not kidding. Southeast Indy. Uh, John, you and I have actually, I think we've been over this before somewhere uh, in comments or uh, we're, yeah, I know you and I are pretty close. I think we were, when you told me before, we were like maybe 45 minutes to an hour apart or something like that. Uh, let's connect. We'll have to definitely connect. These Hoosiers. This is crazy. Keep jumping back to the list. So as I look at the list here, there's not even that many people here, obviously. Uh, so Rick from Florida. John, Indiana. Jason, Indiana. M-Track, Indiana. Kyle, Indiana. And Doug, One Eye Customs, Pennsylvania. It's... A little lopsided here. Kind of like it. You're no, so Kyle's Kyle must have had interactions with John too. I was gonna say it does start with the C. I think it was like Crothersville or something like that. My neighbor's actually from Connorsville. Was. Now he's my neighbor. He lives right next to Andy Farm Left. He's actually kind of part of it. Yeah, we're on pins and needles now. Uh, concrete in the barn. I just, you know, and I like to enjoy my summer too. Last year we got together with Kyle and I-65 and County Line. Yep. We're pretty much neighbors, John. We're neighbors. I was looking at my list of, of things to, to get done. I'm um, very good at writing long lists of things. Well, yeah. I don't know if you saw my basement build. I ended up when we did when we did that. I haven't really documented all of that. We still have a little bit to, to button up before I want to unveil the final final project. Uh, but back to my project list for the year. Uh, I want to build like a little footbridge. So if I don't know how well it's been documented in the videos. 
do any more work on the ditch by the house. So Kyle, I'm getting ready to talk about that. I want to build a footbridge from our basement walkout, the stairs that go up. So if you watch our basement video, when I kind of first come down and go into the basement, there is a, um, a little ditch. And that's where I was talking about me bringing a uh, sump pump to pump water out into the pond. I want to do a footbridge across there. So when you come out of the basement, uh, go across the footbridge, make your way to the pond instead of having to do a little longer walk around um and my my thinking is that when i build my footbridge over to the barn my conduit for my electric is going to run across there as well so that i am not putting a uh you know electrical line underneath the creek bed so i haven't yet but i will be kyle near shelbyville Indy. my goodness over share one. <laughs> we missed you, Doug. Thanks. Welcome back. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to get a footbridge across there. Um, you know, as Kyle and Adam from, I don't know, it was Kyle and, and Doug will be here hopefully this summer. But as Kyle knows, um, our pond's kind of built for, you know, hosting, entertaining and all that. So one thing I want to do is make it easy for folks to make their way over to the house to use the restroom as needed. You know, because me and all my buddies, we will not pee in the pond or by the pond. We go up to the house, just like One Eye Customs was just talking about. Yeah, that'd be sweet, Kyle. Um, I've got a bunch of three-inch conduit that's been laying around. Uh, so I'm going to use most of that to run it out there. But the more I thought about it, I didn't want to be digging in the creek bed. Even though it'd be direct barrier, I didn't want to, you know, dig down there. Plus, my sewer line actually runs underneath that creek bed. It's kind of a messed up little thing. Um, most people probably don't know that unless they were watch way back videos when we first dug the sewer. But yeah, you come out of the house. There's kind of a little drain ditch or creek bed there, and my sewer line is at the bottom of it. What's a little overkill? Overshared BP. <laughs> yeah, a trencher would be nice, Rick. Um, I don't have a trencher. I do have a trenching bucket for my backhoe, but even then it makes too much of a mess. Three-inch PVC. <laughs> yeah, it is overkill. Um, but it was from the previous landowner, so I didn't pay anything for it. It was either you that or go buy smaller stuff that, you know, because what if I ever, what if I ever want to run, you know, like another you know, 240 out to the, or 400 amp panel out to my barn from my house. Why not? Oh yeah. A little 10 inch stretching bucket. Yeah. Mine's only a 12 inch for the backhoe for the 580 K. Um, but just getting that thing around, man, it's a little cumbersome. And she's hurting, guys. I don't know if any have any, uh, maybe M track. I don't know if he's still here or not. He said, I think it said something about repair and off hurting. Uh, the 580 struggling. The transmission is so weak right now. The other day we were moving just a giant boulder on the property, and I was going up just like a one or two percent grade with it, and it would not hardly make it. I could feed the fish, Kyle. Feed the fish. Yeah, M track. So you uh do you work on heavy equipment repairs? My 580 needs some love, and it's one of those things that I, I want to do. I want I, I think I know what the issue is, um, but it's finding the time to do it and then also having the downtime on the machine. I don't use it that often, but when I do use it, I'm using the hoe of the machine. And I'll be darned if I'm gonna get to the point where you know, I want to use it, but I can't because the transmission is screwed up. What do these guys give me a suggestion on here? Use the three inch for the wire and also a water line to fill the pond. Just don't splice the wire inside. Sage advice, Doug. Yeah, I could. I just need the, I need, I just need the water itself to find somewhere to pump. Transmission in my van slips in reverse. It slips in. Hold on. I need clarification, Rick. It slips in reverse. So 
when you're in reverse, the transmission slips, or you're often driving down the road and it slips into reverse. They are very different things and could lead to very different results. I only do small engines. Well, M track, that doesn't help me. But you're still from Indiana, so you know what? You're good on my list. Yeah, the next time I do one of these lives, um, definitely going to need to invite someone on to join me to chat or have someone physically here to chat with me because standing here, sitting here, talking at screens a little bit interesting. Yeah, if I get in reverse, I can barely move without getting out and pushing. Well, that's... Uh, it's kind of like those cars. My kids are spoiled and they have all these, you know, insanely nice um, RC cars. But it's like the ones that used to, you know, you have to back up and the wheels turn and then, you know what I'm talking about. When is the next video? I'm going to pop in and say hi. Got to get going. See ya. Uh, hopefully it won't be tractor related. Uh, I'm finishing up some floating shelves here in the basement with a unique kind of bracket that I bought. Um, I got those stained up. Uh, over the weekend and polyed. So they'll be going up soon. From there, though, it's probably going to be unboxing and setting up the Super Split HD, which will be here tomorrow. And then I also want to maybe um, want to get back in the barn lot and start doing stuff out there. But good to have you temporarily. Temporarily. Yeah, I'd like to get to, as, as Doug from Spice Earth. <laughs> As Doug from One Eye Custom said, uh, do you still make videos? Well, yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to get more of those going. What does my shirt say? Oh, funny you should ask. It says, I love the smell of diesel, and it's a grasshopper shirt. Fitting, right? You guys brought the lawnmower up, so it works. Uh, Kyle, we should, and, and Doug, if you're both still here, we we should do, a, I don't know if you can do a three-person, you can invite that one guy that has a few followers if you wanted, but it'd be cool to do a video collab. Um, honestly, I don't know how we do it. Can you open it up just to Indiana folks? Kind of cool if you had an Indiana-focused video. Yeah, I agree, Jason. It'd be easier to have a conversation. I have some chicken scratch notes here of what I wanted to talk about and there's also a whole, like a little bit of rust because you know you've never done this before. Uh, but I agree. Another person joining would be very sweet. John, I'm with you. Time is everything. M track, uh, I don't know if you're a grasshopper fan or whatnot. Um, I think this came from there's a, a grasshopper dealer called the Mower Shop out there. Maybe it's the Mower Shop Inc. And they've got a great parts manual um, for everything under the sun for all the grasshopper mowers that's where i usually source all my stuff because their diagrams and, and whatnot are perfect and i think if you buy a certain dollar amount they give you a, a free t-shirt and this was one of the ones i got oh yeah kyle's getting starlink nice you know actually it's really funny you say that so um we were talking about fishing and me and my two buddies were actually at the pond we've been out there saturday sunday night late it was like 9 30 or 10. And we saw the Starlink satellites. I made a joke and said, uh, look at that airplane, because my buddy likes to track them on flight radar 24 or whatever. And I said, well, there's three of them. There's four of them. We looked it, in, looked it up, and it was Starlink satellites. We saw, I think, 26 of them in a row. It was pretty cool. I love grass. I've got a 720K and a 616. Yeah, in track, I... Oh, cool. John, you saw it. So that's how close we are, right? Isn't that crazy? It was probably Sunday night at like 9.30 or 9.45. Wild. Um, M-Track, yeah. I, I'd, I'll i probably be buried in my grasshopper. That's just the way it is. I've got my five-year-old now uh, driving the mower. He loves it. But I, it's, it's the best mower, especially the front mounts. Can't beat them. Front mount with a Kubota diesel, hard to beat. The Starlink thing was crazy though. 997 zero steer rear discharge. There it is. That's where it's at. If you're trying to move some tall stuff. 
Yeah, Doug. So, um, like I said, I'm trying to unload my bush hog. Hey, any of you Indiana folks, do you need a large bush hog? I know I mentioned this early in the conversation. Unloading my seven foot woods R107 dash close. Need one? Let me know. Uh, but Doug, back to the rear discharge. I want to swap that bush hog for a, a rear discharge finish mower. I I've not run one, but I've watched a lot of videos, and it seems like the rear discharge is the way to go when you're trying to actually get stuff from out of the deck and cut tall stuff. Yeah, no clumps or windrows. That'd be sweet. I like drifting them as well. <laughs> well, yeah. You got to be careful because it's pretty easy to damage turf with a grasshopper doing that. But when you're out by the pond and you don't care, it's pretty awesome. Um, I posted a short a couple years ago where I got, I got caught in a rainstorm out by the pond. And I just let the camera roll and I started doing donuts out there. And it was, it was like being a kid again, screwing around on my grandpa's tractors and lawnmowers. We did do that, by the way, quite a bit. Me and my cousin got in a little bit of trouble. Let's see who's still here. It's, it's dwindling. It's past Kyle's bedtime. Like you prefer the Kohler. Okay. I will say my neighbor who first turned me on to grasshopper mowers, uh, he can't remember which model was, but it had a Kohler in it and it had 11,000 hours on it before it died. A Kohler gas engine. Do you believe that? I don't like re-discharge on mowers. Otherwise bad situation. I, Kyle, I feel like I don't want to touch that one. I'm not sure where you're going with that. Pouring you another Keystone. That's fantastic. Like out of a, into a nice frosty mug. Donuts and stunts are fun on the Bobcat. It's always a temptation. Yeah. If I had a Bobcat, I would seriously break something. Problem, Because I'd be trying to be one of those guys who like to put it up on the front two wheels and spin in circles. So do you ever do the pew pew thing? I missed it. 2,000 hours on that. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, mine's at uh, 1,400 or something like that. I don't put a ton of hours on my machine, but of course Doug got it. So do you ever do the pew pew thing? All right, Johnny, you just asked me to do like target practice out here. Kyle and uh, Adam wanted me to do a uh, use my berm as a a range, but it kind of backs up to a walking trail. I mean, it's 85 feet thick, but it just doesn't feel right still. 616 has 800 and doesn't work. It runs off the Briggs. Okay. Wish my tractor could handle that cutter, but mine's about, right about six foot. Yeah. Uh, I Roger, I'll tell you, when I bought that silly bush dog i got nervous before when i was on the trailer or when i was on the trailer and i was driving at home i didn't think it was going to fit it it did it had one pins on it so if that tells you anything about the size of it yeah well rick you must be more careful than me i ended up having a few of those ipas that they were talking about earlier and then i'd really break something yeah john no we've uh we've uh my neighbors and i've shot out here um it's with the kids around anymore. We just don't have much time to do it. Um, so we have some area that we could, the burn that we have would be fantastic. Like I said, it's close to like a public walking trail. So even though we'd be safe and probably within our right to do so, I'm sure we'd get a lot of people wandering right over to ask what's going on. So we've kind of left that one untouched for the moment anyway. We'll hang out here for a few more, then we'll shut her down maybe around... 10 here but this is kind of cool i um the group that's actually here is people who kind of comment on the videos mostly so i like that oh yeah uh we could shoot clays over the farm field right we could i mean if he might question why there's a bunch of clays laying in his in his field john enjoy the steaks and ipas thanks for being here let's uh let's connect sometime be cool kind of cool I said, you're down the street. Yeah, we used to shoot clays in my buddy's field. Just, you know, life. I got all these other YouTube guys blowing me up all the time, wanting to do collabs and 
just don't have time. Has anyone, um, I'm going to go back to the super split for a minute. Has anyone actually, if you stand on the berm, you could shoot walkers. Facts. Actually, facts. You could. You can visibly see them when the leaves are down. Um, we're actually getting a, a neighborhood development not too far from us. It'll make more sense to Kyle than anyone. I'll have to show you on a map sometime. Not, not extremely thrilled about it. So we're kind of been angling with the farmer next to us to uh, shore up property. If they ever stop farming, we want to be first in line to buy some more property, buy a little buffer, a little more acreage to do some farm stuff. <laughs> uh, yeah, old one eye. He's a, he's a good one. Old Dougie. Development is, yes, it's nonstop around, um, around us. Garrett, how many acres do we have? We have uh, a little over nine, I believe. Um, we're kind of in a unique spot with our neighbors and all encompass. We have about, there's about 40 acres kind of where we're at with a few homes on it. Um, but the biggest, and you know, you see, if you watch my videos, you see our pond and it looks like we're in the wide open expanse. Um, namely because we've got one neighbor who owns about 800 acres of, of farmland. That's kind of all right around us. So I would love to get our hands on some of that. Party projects on this channel. Development is everywhere. I mean, people need a place to live, but does it have to be by me? Does it have to be next to my pond? I think not. So we're going to do our best to, to snag a little more acreage, hopefully at some point, which would allow for more fun projects around here, let the kids have more places to run, and just make life all the more relaxing when we're here and not, not at work. Oh. Yeah, I'm blown away with the number of people from Indiana in here. One has a smart guy. Some pretty impressive projects. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I was meaning to tell folks. Yeah. Here, I can. I'll grab it. I think I can open up his channel and post it if he's not actively on here right now anymore. I could put him in timeout. Should we do that? Well, you should be able to do that. Maybe Kyle can grab it for me. It's just search one on customs. There he is. I got it. Yeah, I tried that, Kyle. I'm I'm a noob. Hard talking to someone else that could be able to click his icon. Either way, I just linked it below. This whole YouTube thing. I'm not a seasoned veteran, even though I think I've maybe been on YouTube longer than Kyle has. So. <laughs> My area has no autocorrect. Really. Oh, your front yard is a roundabout. Sorry about that. I'm here. I, I don't follow Intrax autocorrect. Comment. Yeah, I don't know about the icon thing there, Kyle. I'm I'm like an old millennial. So I technically am a millennial, but, you know, so I, I can almost like scapegoat out of it that, that maybe I'm not the millennial generation. And yeah, Kyle had a 
I run in with that and change it in a big way. When do you have summer vacation time? Nothing really planned for the summer yet. We're not really going anywhere per se, um, but I'll probably start here in the next you know month or so. I'll start lining up Thursday, Fridays to be off and start getting these projects. Um, are you angling for a trip for Pennsylvania? Is that what you want me to do? Because I've I've mentioned it to my wife. I've talked about coming out there for a few days. Yeah, let's do it. I'll take a few days and we'll pop over and that'd be fantastic. I just need to get it on the calendar, like Adam said. All right. I'm not telling Adam. Like, oh, thanks. <laughs> I assume when you say up, you're talking about the other Adam. So you really mean over and you're not talking about me, right? Can I have a shout out, please? M track. I don't know if that, know what that means. You mean within the group right here? I figured Kyle, it's, it's more fun to make fun of Adam when he's not here. M track. I'm trying to see. I can't. I don't know if I can go to. Do you have a channel, M track? We got another Hoosier. I'll have to check you out if you do. Yeah, it's happy. I'm happy to. <laughs> oh, you guys are ribbing each other. I love it. Even when he's not here. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I assume it's lady. I said, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah, M Track. I didn't know you had a channel, M Track. I've never run across. I will not let you throw a link in here. M Track repair and off-roading. I mean, you got me curious with the small engine repair thing. You might end up having some of my stuff come your way. M Track repair. I've got an old tiller. I need some work, some love. You know, it's quiet. It's funny. I, I you know, I, I've got a, I won't even say a decent amount of followers. Um, and some of you guys who are here commenting and having a conversation with me is uh, like kind of the ones that have been with me like long term, kind of a diehard thing. But the reason I think I have most of the followers I have are just some evergreen videos, really. Um, I would consider my channel very small in the grand scheme. I don't have a lot of um, people who come back to the channel just over and over. Uh, it's more people kind of, I have some how-to videos that people have sought out. And they click on, they say they're going to come back or they click, you know, subscribe and then you never hear from them again. So don't get discouraged. It takes a lot of time as uh, Kyle and Doug can attest. It takes a minute. Oh, and he's been bested at six foot six. All right, we have a new winner. Yeah, M track. I know the feeling. Mine's took a minute. It's been like six years in the making to get where we're at. It is not easy, Kyle. You put in a ton of time, you know. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you joining and Kyle, Doug, John. Rick, M Track. That's the that's the group. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, many more videos, hopefully to come. Jason, pop back in. Jason, we're gonna wrap this up, but keep us posted on Pond. And uh, we'll have to connect too. I think you said you're down close to where I grew up. Um, yeah, looking forward to. Thanks for the live, buddy. Appreciate it. Thanks, Kyle. Appreciate that, John. Thank you. Yeah, we'll do it again. Um, I said we may have to have some more interactive conversation next time so it's not me sitting here in my cold basement uh looking like i'm just in an insane asylum with the wall behind me so appreciate it guys and you know what we'll see you in the comments get that super split out here real soon have a good night guys see it